In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the equation of a line with certain properties. And in each question, we're going to be given a point that we want the line to go through. And we're also going to be told that we want that line to be either parallel or perpendicular to a different line. Before continuing with this video, make sure you are comfortable with straight line graphs from topic A9A and also that you're comfortable with gradients of parallel and perpendicular lines from topic A9B. Let's have a look at the first question. Now, for this question, I'm going to illustrate what I'm doing on this grid on the right hand side. But eventually we're going to be doing these questions purely using algebra without having to draw any diagrams. I'm going to start by sketching y equals 2x plus 3. Now we know that this has a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of positive 3. That means I want this straight line to go through here on the y-axis. It crosses the y-axis at positive 3 and it's going to have a gradient of 2. So that means every time I go one unit across, I need to go two units up. Every time I go one across, I need to go two units up. So I can plot a few points like this to help me out. And then I'll use a ruler to join them up with a straight line. Now, what I'm actually looking for in this question is a line that is parallel to this one, and it has to go through the point 1, negative 2. So I want it to go through this point here. From the previous topic, you should remember that two parallel lines will have the same gradient. That means the parallel line is going to have an equation of the form y equals 2x plus something, and that something is going to be the y-intercept that we need for our parallel line. And how can we work out what that intercept will be? Well, let's consider the original line that we've got. That's this one here. If you look at the point that has an x-coordinate of 1 on this line, you'll see that we've got the point 1, 5. Now, the parallel line needs to go through the point 1, negative 2. That is 7 steps lower. So we're going to have to do the same thing to the intercept here. We are going down 7 steps from 3, and that will get us to negative 4. So now that we know that the y-intercept is negative 4, we can say that the equation of the parallel line we're looking for is y equals 2x plus negative 4, which I can write more simply as y equals 2x minus 4. Let's just draw this out to see that it is correct. We're going to have a line with a gradient of 2, which is what we wanted, that goes through the point 0, negative 4, so negative 4 on the y-axis. So that intercept is actually this point right here, and a gradient of 2 means that every time we go one step across, we need to go two steps up. So joining these two with a straight line gives me this, which hopefully you can see is parallel to the original line and goes through the point that we wanted, 1, negative 2. Now, what I'm going to do is demonstrate this question again, but without using a graph, purely using algebra. The method I'm going to use is not actually going to be the fastest way of doing this using algebra, but I'm going to show you a formula that's actually going to be really, really helpful to you in the long run. Here's the formula. This is telling us that if we want the equation of a line, with a particular gradient m, and we want that line to go through the point x1, y1, then the equation of that line will be y minus y1 equals m multiplied by x minus x1. So let's see how that works with this particular question. We want the line that's parallel to y equals 2x plus 3. That means we want the parallel line to obviously have the same gradient, so we want our gradient m to be 2. And we want it to go through the point 1, negative 2. So our x-coordinate is 1 and our y-coordinate is negative 2. That means 
I've got x1 equals 1 and y1 equals negative 2. And now all I need to do is substitute those in to this formula. I'm going to have y minus negative 2 equals m, so that's 2, brackets, x minus x1, and x1 is just 1 in this case. Now, what I need to do is expand and rearrange. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to have 2x minus 2. On the left-hand side, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. This is y plus 2. y minus negative 2 is the same as y plus 2. And finally, I'm just going to make y the subject of this formula. So that leaves me with y equals 2x minus 4. All I've done there is subtract 2 from the left-hand side. So I need to subtract 2 from the right-hand side as well. And that leaves me with 2x minus 4 here. So the equation of the line that's parallel to y equals 2x plus 3 is y equals 2x minus 4, which is what we found before. So once you know this formula, it's only really three lines of working in this particular case. Here's question two. This time we're looking for a line that's parallel to y equals 7 minus x that goes through the point 5, 0. So we can use this formula and what we need to first observe is that the gradient is negative 1. Remember there's an invisible 1 there, so 7 minus x is the same as 7 minus 1x and that means the gradient is negative 1. So I'm just going to write that down for m. Our x1, that's the x-coordinate of the point we want the line to go through, is 5. So we have x1 equals 5. And then we have our y-coordinate of the point we want the line to go through being 0. So y1 equals 0. Pause the video and see if you can complete this question. Here's what you should have got. We have y minus y1, which is just 0, equals negative 1, lots of x minus 5. Now, the left-hand side simplifies to y, which is quite handy. And the right-hand side, if you expand that, gives us negative x plus 5. So this is going to be a line with a gradient of negative 1, which is what we wanted and it's going to have a y-intercept of 5. Here's what those graphs look like, and hopefully you can see they are parallel. Also note that instead of writing y equals negative x plus 5, we could write y equals 5 minus x. That's another way of saying the same thing. Here's question 3. Pause the video and see if you can do this one for yourself. Here's the answer. Make sure to take real care with negative numbers like this. Also note that you can quite easily check your final answer. So we've got here y equals 2x plus 23. We can clearly see that it's got a gradient of 2, so we know it's parallel to this. And we can check that it goes through the point negative 8, 7 by substituting negative 8 into our x here. 2 lots of negative 8 is negative 16. And when we add 23, we get 7 as our y value. And that's exactly what we want. If we didn't get 7, that would mean we'd made a mistake somewhere in here. Remember, any point on this line has to satisfy this equation. That means if you take a point and you look at its x-coordinate and its y-coordinate, this equation has to be true for those values. Here's question 4. Now, this one doesn't actually require that formula that we've just been using. You can do this with common sense. We're looking for a line that's perpendicular, that means at right angles, to y equals 4 and goes through the point 5, 7. Now, the line y equals 4 actually is a horizontal line. It's got a gradient of 0, which again is something you should remember from topic A9a. Here's what that line looks like. Every single point on this line, wherever you go, has a y-coordinate of 4. 
So this point here is 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 3 point five four. Remember, it's not just whole number coordinates we're interested in. Every single point along this line has a y coordinate 4. Now, if we want a perpendicular line to that, that goes through 5, 7, that's this point here, you can see that clearly we're looking for a vertical line, which looks like this. Pause the video and see if you can tell me the equation of this line here. Hopefully you've got it. It is the line x equals 5. Every single point on this line has an x coordinate of 5. Here's the point 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, and so on. Let's have a look at question 5. This time we're looking for a perpendicular line to this one here. That means the gradient that we want isn't going to be the same as the gradient of this line. In fact, this line has a gradient of 2, but the perpendicular line is going to have a gradient of negative 1 over 2. If you remember back to topic A9B, if one line has a gradient of g, let's say, then a perpendicular line will have a gradient of negative 1 over that gradient g. So this line has a gradient of 2, the perpendicular line is going to have a gradient of negative 1 over 2. Pause the video and see if you can complete this question. Here's the answer. y equals negative a half x plus 4. So the process was exactly the same apart from the little bit of an extra step at the beginning where we needed to work out the gradient that we actually wanted for our perpendicular line. It wasn't going to be the same as the gradient of the original line. We had to do negative 1 over the original gradient to get this perpendicular gradient. Here's the final question in this video. See if you can answer this one for yourself. Here's what you should have got. The gradient of the line we're given is negative 3. That means the gradient of the perpendicular line is going to be negative 1 over negative 3, which simplifies to 1 third. x1 in our case is going to be 8, and y1 in our case is going to be 2. Substituting these values in, we get y minus 2 equals a third x minus 8. If we expand the right hand side, we end up seeing that y minus 2 equals a third x minus 8 thirds. Now, what I need to do is add 2 to the left and the right hand sides. So that gives me y equals a third x minus 8 thirds plus 2. But what I can do here is spot that 2 is the same as 6 thirds. So just replacing the 2 with 6 thirds, what I can do next is notice that I can simplify this bit. Negative 8 thirds plus 6 thirds gives me negative 2 thirds. So I end up with y equals a third x minus 2 thirds. And that's our answer. The point of this example was just to show you that you can end up with fractions in your equation like this, so don't be afraid of those.